Hey, survivors, Zed Files here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the new Ark Genesis creature, the Bloodstalker, also known as the Bog Spider. First I'll be covering the Bloodstalker's taming process, second its travelling capabilities, third its attacks, fourth its health and weight, fifth its abilities, and sixth bonus things that it can do. You'll find Bloodstalkers hanging from the giant trees in the bog biome. One of the giant trees I found had like 10 Bloodstalkers hanging from it. The coordinates for this tree are 75 latitude and 69 longitude. You don't need to go to this specific tree. Any of the giant trees in the bog biome you come across can be homes to Bloodstalkers. If you get too close to the Bloodstalker, which can still be from pretty far away, it will shoot you with its webs and slowly reel you in towards it. It can even rub you off your mount, so make sure to never let your guard down. Once the Bloodstalker drags you up to it, it will start to suck your blood, and keep sucking until you die. You aren't completely helpless in this situation, you can just punch it a couple of times and it will let go of you, but since the Bloodstalkers hang from so high up, if you don't have a way to land safely, like using a parachute, you'll die from the full damage. So I suggest that you always have a parachute with you when you are travelling in the bog biome. Even if you do manage to land safely, the Bloodstalker will start chasing you and try to finish you off the old fashioned way. It can also try to web you up and suck your blood when it's on the ground. And a bonus tip, while the Bloodstalker is dragging you towards it, you can use ranged weapons to damage it, which will make it let go of you, but it will still fall to the ground and start chasing you. So now for taming the Bloodstalker, the only things you'll need are blood packs and also some parachutes, just in case things go wrong. To get blood packs, you will need to learn and make the blood extraction syringe. Once you've done that, you keep it in your inventory and start extracting your own blood. Each time you'll lose 25 health, and you can use it every 5 seconds. You'll need to keep extracting your blood until you have like 1000 blood packs. So yeah, farming these blood packs will take you some time. Make sure to have some cooked meat with you, so that you can quickly regain your HP. And also, every now and then, make sure to put your fresh blood packs in a creature's inventory, or a preserving bin, to help them spoil slower. It'll be better if you farm blood packs while you're doing something else at the same time, like harvesting resources or something, to avoid it being super boring. Once you have your thousands of blood packs, there was two uses for them. One is you can apply it to yourself and regain 15 health within 40 second cooldowns, which is pretty useless. And the other way is to feed them to the Bloodstalk. Bloodstalk is a passive tame, you just have to let it web you up and reel you in. Then instead of it sucking your blood and damaging you, it will just feed on your blood packs, leaving you unharmed. It will take a few minutes for it to consume enough blood packs for it to become tamed. So during this time you can just relax and stare into that beautiful spider body. A possible problem during this process is if anything damages the Bloodstalker, it will let go of you, so hope for the best that no wild creatures interrupt. Once it's tamed, it will latch onto you, and you will become one with the Bloodstalker. It's fine with eating just meat, however, when the Bloodstalker gets below half health, it will start to suck your blood in order to heal itself. Your health will quickly drop, and you could very easily die. If you have blood packs in your inventory, then it will consume those instead and you won't get hurt. There is a way for the Bloodstalker to quickly heal itself besides stealing your own blood, which I'll get into later on. The best thing about the Bloodstalker is its travelling capabilities. It can turn on the spot and strafe, its sprinting speed is around the same speed as a raptor. While sprinting, it can run right up vertical surfaces. Instead of swimming, it just hovers over the water, and it can also sprint on the water. It can jump, and the jumps are more vertical than horizontal. Pressing jump will give you a small jump, and holding it down will charge a super jump. The jump can be charged while moving, and it won't affect your speed. And when the Bloodstalker super jumps while sprinting, it will do a cool flip animation. You can do a second jump midair. This jump can be more horizontal than vertical, unlike its first jump and it cannot be charged, so the Bloodstalker can double jump. The Bloodstalker has 600 stamina at level 1 base team stats, 
they can travel for several minutes before running out. The Bloodstalker has some of the best travelling capabilities, and I haven't even included its web ability yet. The Bloodstalker's first two attacks are to control the left and right web attacks. You can aim these by using the two little circles that are next to the crosshair that you get. When you use one of these attacks, you will just shoot out a web that you can hang from, and this has insane range. If you hold it down, it will pull you towards the place where you shot. And then jumping will make you let go of whatever you're hanging from. Using these controls, you can manage to swing around and build quite a lot of momentum. Using both web attacks at the same time can let you stay in place in midair. If you hold down one of the web attacks while doing this, you will build tension and then get slingshotted for it. And some bonus tips I have for web swinging. When you are very close to something that you are webbed to, you can hold down, jump, and then start climbing on it. When you've webbed a surface while you're on the ground, jumping will just make you jump. So to let go of the surface, instead of pressing jump, you need to use your third attack. And holding down your third attack while you're falling down can make you float down like a parachute. If you can master the Bloodstalker, it is definitely the best traveling creature in all of Ark for the bog biome, and also other biomes that have a lot of vertical surfaces, like the Redwood Forest in the island, and the Tech City in Extinction. Now for the Bloodstalker's damaging attacks. Another thing you can do with the web attacks besides swinging is webbing small creatures, reeling them in towards you and then start sucking their blood. When you put your crosshair on a small enough creature, it will turn purple and the creature will also grow a purple circle. Then you just have to hold down one of the web attacks. Once you reel the creature in at level 1 base tame stats, it will do 9 damage and attack 2 times every second. So the damage per second for this attack is 18. With each attack, the Bloodstalker will heal a little bit. Using a single Parasaur, the Bloodstalker can heal itself up around 500 health. You'll keep sucking the victim's blood until the victim dies, or you run out of stamina or get damaged. The victims can't attack you while you're holding them, but their allies can. There's a 10 second cooldown after using this attack. This attack is legendary for replenishing the Bloodstalker's health, it is also good for assassinating lone creatures. You can also use this attack as a lasso and pull creatures around with you. The Bloodstalker's second damaging attack is its slash. At level 1 base team stats, it does 39 damage and attacks once every second, so its damage per second is just 39. This is pretty high for a creature that's main purpose is to travel. So now for the Bloodstalker's health and weight. At level 1 base team stats, the Bloodstalker has 450 health and 350 weight. At level 297 max team stats, with 32 wild points and 15 team points pumped into health, 23 wild points and 20 team points pumped into weight, the Bloodstalker has 9000 health and 920 weight. These are pretty good stats, they're slightly better than Akana stats, with 30 more health and 50 more weight at level 1, but they aren't as good as Athyla's stats, about a couple hundred less in both areas at level 1. The Bloodstalker's first ability is that it has special vision that helps it with spotting and catching its prey. Creatures that are able to be webbed are outlined in red, webbed creatures are outlined in yellow, creatures that are too small to be webbed are outlined in white, and also when your webbing attack is on cooldown, Webbable creatures outline will go from red to white. The white outlines help you with spotting smaller victims and also finding your next target. And lastly, tame creatures are outlined in green. The Bloodstalker's second ability is that it allows Rider Reprimary. And it doesn't just allow Rider Reprimary, it also stands up as tall as it can to help you with getting a better view. This is especially helpful when using ranged weapons. You can also use weapons while you are hanging off the side of something, but it's very difficult to aim. And lastly, some bonus things about the Bloodstalker. It can harvest corpses, but it doesn't get much resources. And it can be mate boosted and bred. The egg it lays is awesome looking, but it can't be picked up, so wherever the egg is laid is where it'll hatch. 
So, now that I've shown you everything you need to know about the Bloodstalker, I'll give a quick summary. The Bloodstalker is one of the fastest shovel mounts in Ark, and definitely the fastest in the bog biome. It also has some pretty good attacks, decent amounts of health and weight, and also some super useful abilities. Well, we've now reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like, and also make sure to be subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any future Arc Genesis videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.